وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As always we begin with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal and we begin by asking Allah Azza wa Jal to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one who was sent as a mercy for all of mankind and upon his family and his companions and all those who follow them until the last day. Welcome to another episode of Ramadan Droplets, where we share an important point relating to the month of Ramadan every single night. So our benefit for this evening is entitled Taking Responsibility. And ultimately, when we talk about taking responsibility, there are really two things that we want to highlight and share with you this evening, inshallah ta'ala. The first is that we are responsible. We as Muslims are responsible and we have responsibilities that have been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are wide ranging in nature. There are responsibilities that you have for yourself. There are responsibilities that you have towards other people. And the second thing we really want to highlight for you in this episode is taking responsibility. You are responsible and you have to take responsibility. And we're going to share with you examples of taking responsibility from the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, both related to Ramadan and also generally speaking. So what we're talking about this evening is taking responsibility. We are responsible and we have to take responsibility for the things that Allah has entrusted us with. Our very first ayah is in Surah Al-Ahzab, and it's the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Inna aradna al-amanata ala al-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibal fa'abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insan innahu kana zaluman jahula. Indeed, we offered responsibility to the heavens and the earth and the mountains and they declined to take it on. and They were fearful of it. And mankind took it on. Indeed, he was incredibly oppressive and incredibly ignorant. I started with this ayah because I just feel that this ayah sets the scene for the fact that we as human beings have taken on a huge responsibility, a huge amana, a trust in the sight of Allah. And while the scholars of tafsir, their different statements around this amana, they differ, but broadly speaking, the amana is the amana of Islam. The amana of following what Allah has obliged you to do and keeping away from what Allah has prohibited you from doing. That is a huge responsibility in the sight of Allah. And that's something that we as human beings and as Muslims have taken on for ourselves. And so the first very step is to recognize that we have responsibilities and those responsibilities that we have taken on as Muslims, those responsibilities, they have to be fulfilled. Another ayah which emphasizes this point in Surah Al-Isra, ayah number 36, that Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا and do not follow that which you have no knowledge of. Indeed, your hearing and your sight and your heart, all of those things you will be asked about. And indeed, the word asked about can also be understood as you will be responsible for. So Allah Azza wa has made us responsible for what we hear and what we see and responsible for our heart and its actions. So Allah Azza wa has given us a responsibility towards ourselves before we have even a responsibility towards other people. And that responsibility towards ourselves is highlighted in Surah Shams, between ayah number 8 and ayah number 10, when Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا 
قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها Allah Azza wa Jal said by the soul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the soul and the one who proportioned it and the one who inspired it as to what is fujur and what is taqwa what is wickedness and what is righteousness what is wickedness what's bad what's wrong what's evil and what is good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything that you need to know and has taught you everything, both intrinsically in, in the sense of your fitrah and in terms of uh, openly in the sense of the rules and the laws of the sharia. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything that you need to take responsibility for yourself. And that's why in the next ayah, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful is the one who purifies that soul. I, the one who takes the responsibility that they've been given for themselves and fulfills that responsibility by purifying that nafs. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا And failed is the one who corrupts that soul and doesn't take the responsibility for it. So our nafs is a responsibility that we have been given and we have to take responsibility for ourselves. And that is why in Surah Yusuf, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, Inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu. The soul is constantly inclined towards evil. And this has a particular benefit in relation to Ramadan. Because we're told in Ramadan, the doors of paradise are open, the doors of their fire are closed, and the shayateen are chained. But even though the shayateen are chained, that doesn't absolve us from responsibility for our nafs. That doesn't absolve us or remove from us the responsibility of our nafs, of our own soul, which is inclined towards evil and which has its own, if you like, uh, crookedness or its own deviancy within it. And no doubt the reduction in the effect of the shaytan makes it easier in Ramadan to take that responsibility. But it's still a responsibility you have and it's not for a person to say that, well, the shaytan are chained so I don't have to worry about the fujur, about the wickedness of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about for alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. But rather, we still have to take that responsibility in the month of Ramadan for ourselves. And your own self is an amana and a responsibility, a trust and a mas'uliyah in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for our responsibility towards others, then I would like to start by mentioning a hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar. رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ألا كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته فالأمير الذي على الناس راع وهو مسؤول عن رعيته والرجل راع على أهل بيته وهو مسؤول عنهم والمرأة راعية على بيت بعلها وولده وهي مسؤولة عنهم والعبد راع على مال سيده وهو مسؤول عن ألا فكلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته عبد الله بن عمر narrated from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said indeed all of you are shepherds and all of you will be responsible for your flock and again the word مسؤول here means you'll be asked about it and you'll be held responsible for it so we're not only going to be held Yawm Al-Qiyamah responsible for ourselves, responsible for the good that we do or responsible for the bad that we do, responsible for purifying that soul which has that inclination towards evil and responsible for keeping it away from the things that it desires that are bad for it. But we're also going to be responsible for other people as well. The Prophet ﷺ gave the first example. He said the Amir, the one who is in charge of the people, responsible for the people like a governor or a ruler of some kind, that person is a ra'in, that person is a shepherd and he will be asked about his flock, he will be asked about the people that he governed and the man is responsible, he will be asked about his family and his household and that's his responsibility, his area of responsibility. So especially in Ramadan, every one of us 
has to look at the fact that we have responsibility over our families, responsibility for them to take the benefit from this month, to follow the laws and the commandments of this month, to keep away from the things that Allah has been made forbidden relating to, to this month of Ramadan and indeed relating to all of the other aspects of Islam. So that man, he has a responsibility, he has to take that responsibility in the sight of Allah Azawajal. But not only the man, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the woman is responsible for the house of her husband and his children. And she is responsible and will be asked about them. She's a shepherd and she will be asked about them. And even the slave is responsible for the wealth of his owner and he will be asked and held responsible for it. He's a shepherd, he will be held responsible for it. Indeed, all of you are shepherds and all of you will be responsible for your flock be asked about and held responsible for it. So this hadith tells us that our responsibility is not just a responsibility towards ourselves, but it's also a responsibility towards other people. And as we said, in Ramadan, that responsibility towards yourself, and we're going to hear a specific example relating to Ramadan at the end of this episode, inshallah ta'ala, from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But even as, that, as it relates to Ramadan, you have that responsibility for yourself, and you also have responsibility towards other people. And there are many examples in the Qur'an of taking responsibility. So in the Qur'an we find examples of those who took on board responsibility, they took their responsibility seriously, or they took a responsibility for something, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the fact that they took that responsibility, they saw that there was a need and they took responsibility for it. And one of the examples we have of this is in Surah Ali Imran, the example of the wife of Imran. In ayah number 35, Allah Azza wa Jal told us, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ عِمْرَانَ رَبِّ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطَنِي مُحَرَّرًا فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ When the wife of Imran, she swore an oath. Indeed, my Lord, I have given an oath that I have sworn into service what is in my womb to be, to be in service to you. So accept from me, and indeed you are the all-hearing and the all-knowing. And why this is an example of taking responsibility is that she saw the need of someone to take responsibility for Bayt al-Maqdis, for the place of worship that was in Jerusalem and the need of someone to be in service of that place of worship and to be in service of Bayt al-Maqdis, of, of, of that place in Jerusalem. And so she swore an oath, she took that responsibility, she saw the need for someone to take that responsibility, to stand up and be responsible, and she swore an oath that her child that she would give birth to would be in service to Bayt al-Maqdis, would be serving that place and would be serving that need. So she took responsibility for it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her child, Maryam, even though she expected the child to be a boy, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Maryam and we know how much Allah azza wa jal blessed Maryam. Because, and one of the reasons behind that is that her mother took responsibility. She saw there was a need, she saw that there was a gap and she took responsibility for it. But not only people, even Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in Surah An-Naml in ayah number 18 about an ant that even took its responsibility. And if an ant even takes its responsibility, then are we not Bani Adam? وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا Bani Adam. We have certainly honored Bani Adam. More deserving and more important for us to take responsibility where we see that, though, that there is a need for something or where we know that Allah has placed that responsibility upon us. Allah Azza wa Jalla told us in Surah An-Naml Until when the army of Suleiman came to the valley of the ants, a little ant said, O oh ants, enter your homes so that Suleiman and his army do not tread upon you while they do not perceive that you are there. Look at how that small ant took that huge responsibility to warn all of the other ants about the army that was coming and to give them the warning to all of them to enter into their home, to enter into their 
uh, until the place where they were protected from the army from from the army of Suleiman crushing them. So even the Ant took responsibility, saw there was a need, saw there was something that Allah had placed that responsibility upon them and then took responsibility for it. And so really as Bani Adam, as human beings who Allah has honored and as Muslims who Allah Azza wa has honored even more than that, we are even more deserving to take that responsibility and to fulfill the responsibilities Allah Azza wa has given us. And I said we can come to a specific example for Ramadan and that's what we're going to do right now. And we have a hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha and Aisha radiallahu anha كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر أحيا الليل وأيقظ أهله وجد وشد المئزر Our mother Aisha, she said, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم when the last 10 days came, he would make his night come alive. Meaning he would spend all the night in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Because normally the night is not, a, is not the time of being alive. The night is the time of, it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared it uh, to, to someone who is, who, has, who is dead. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا جَرَحْتُمْ بِالنَّهَارِ He is the one that causes you to die in the night, i.e. to sleep. So normally the night time is a type of, of rest and tranquility and people are lying still. But the Prophet ﷺ in the last 10 days of Ramadan, Ahya layl He would make the night come alive. وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ And he would wake up his family. وَجَدَّ And he would work hard. وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرِ And he would tighten his belt, meaning he would really not, like we say in English, knuckle down and, and uh, get the most out of those last 10 days. So what we take from this is actually both aspects that I had spoken about. Taking responsibility for yourself. The Prophet saw that this night, this last 10 nights of Ramadan has the most virtue of all of the 10 nights. And he saw that that night contains Laylatul Qadr. And so the Prophet took that responsibility to work even harder and to set that example of working even harder in the last 10 nights and striving to find Laylatul Qadr. But this also the second type of responsibility, responsibility for others. And that can be found in the statement, وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ And the Prophet ﷺ woke up his family. So he didn't just take responsibility for himself and set an example for himself, but he took responsibility for his family as well by waking them up to get the most out of those nights of Ramadan. In the last 10 nights of Ramadan and in the month of Ramadan in general, there are so many opportunities, so many obligations that Allah ﷺ has put upon you. It's your responsibility, first of all, to take care of yourself and to take the most from that month possible to purify yourself in the way that Allah commanded you to do so, so that you can be rewarded and you can gain the rewards that exist within this month. And it's also your responsibility to look around you at those who are in need or those you have been placed in responsibility over. It could be your family members and it could be that you see a need that is there, you see that there's nobody else taking responsibility for this particular thing, and you take responsibility for it in the month of Ramadan, so that not only you benefit yourself, but you also benefit others as well. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention about taking responsibility in Ramadan. And Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.